Recently, I've been uh, looking at the distribution of, of human population across the globe and looking at how that uh, intersects with the distribution uh, of, of biodiversity, so species, the number of species that are in any given place, knowing that both humans and uh, the number of species in the world are not evenly distributed across the globe, they're concentrated in certain places. In particular, we find that, that species diversity is concentrated in what's called the biodiversity hotspots. And so these are areas, uh, largely areas in the tropics and in the Mediterranean climates of the world and in along mountains, where there's just a, a real concentration of the number of species and also unique species, so, so plants and animals that exist nowhere else on Earth. It's a very complex relationship between human population and, and biodiversity because it's not, it's not necessarily that places of high human population are, are necessarily a threat to to biodiversity, um, and a bunch of things figure in, uh, like education, like consumption, economic uh, development, different cultures of uh, how people sort of interface with the natural world. All these things uh, create nuances as far as what that relationship is between biodiversity and sort of where people live. So some of the things we can do to, to deal with this issue of, of population growth within the biodiversity hotspots, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different angles that one can approach this from, but strictly on the population side, there's some sort of some basic things that we can do that's going to be good for human welfare as well as for biodiversity. And a, a few of those are education, sort of addressing the, the lack of education, especially among girls. We see that there's a direct correlation between each additional year of schooling that girls have and then their, their fertility rate uh, during their lifetime. Uh, another thing we can we see is that uh, providing some basic health services to, to populations, especially rural areas where population where fertility rates are highest and some of the growth rates are highest, um, providing bringing these these health services, especially reproductive health services, including family planning, uh, is is a service that you're bringing bringing to these people that will help them voluntarily um, have smaller, healthier families. And uh, finally, it's just sort of getting, getting that uh, access out to these rural areas, um, both in terms for their economic benefits. And so we, as we see, as people climb out of poverty, they also choose um, to have smaller, healthier families.